at the five, starting in verse 15. Amen. Now we're going to be reading this from the King James Version. At this time, if you would, we're going to ask all to stand with us. If you could stand, we're going to ask you to stand with us. Amen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. After I pray, we're going to make a faith confession. After the faith confession, I will read the word of the Lord in your hearing. You can feel free thereafter to have your seat in his presence. Just before I do, are the youth come? Y'all remain. All right. We're going to release uh, our youth pastor and uh, youth team. Amen. Let's bless God for them as they go. We have children's church. And they're on their way to children's church. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Also, we thank God for our streaming audience that's tuned in with us on today. Amen. So we say to our audience, we want you to let us know that you're there. Say something. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach, preacher. Amen. I can't wait to get there. Whatever. You know what I mean? Amen. If you have a prayer request, you can also give us your prayer request. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I do honor and thank you for being such a great and gracious God to every one of us. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this time where we will focus our attention on your word. I ask God that you will send forth your word unchecked and unhindered by any force. I decrease that you might increase, Lord Jesus. I give way to the perfect ministry of the Holy Spirit, who is able to take the complex and make it simple. Thank you, Lord God, that you promised that where you send your word, it would not return unto your void. So in advance, we give you thanks and praise for your word accomplishing what you have intended on this day and for this house and all exposed to this word. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you thanks for which you so richly deserve. We do it with joy and all in agreement with this prayer said, Amen. 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 Now, if you would, hold your Bibles up with me and repeat after me. Say, this is the word of God. This is the word of God. It is life. It is life. It is life to me. And because of God's faithfulness. Because of God's faithfulness. Because of God's faithfulness. Because of God's faithfulness. To his word. And my obedience. To him in faith. I now walk in love. And the, blessings, and the blessings, I said, and the blessings, and the blessings of abundant life. Abundant life. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> while you're still standing, while you're still standing, we're reading from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. The scripture says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Going over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 15. Scripture says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man. All right. But ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. 16. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Yes. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In the concluding verse, 19, quench not the spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you would, somebody say, I'm glad, I'm glad to, be alive. to be alive. Come on and give God some praise. I'm glad to be alive. Amen. I'm glad to be alive alive. We give God honor and praise today for which he is duly worthy and we've been in a series entitled An Attitude of Gratitude. An Attitude of Gratitude. And so we have heard, some of us have heard the saying, uh, attitude determines altitude. So so your, your giving of thanks, your acts of appreciation helps to determine how high you go. Amen. Right. Amen. Um, yes, 
And when we think about an attitude of gratitude, an attitude is an emotional position, if you will, that commonly shows up in behavior. So whatever your attitude is, it's how you're thinking, but it has a physical manifestation. Are you hearing me? So when we talk about an attitude of gratitude, we're not talking about you simply feeling good about something. It is also you communicating the good that you feel in what you say and or do. Somebody said love isn't love until you give it away. Sad but true, there are some folk who have grown up in households and they were never told they were loved. They were provided for, but they never heard the three words, I love you. And one wonders, many have grown up and they wondered, was I really loved or was this an act of duty? Was this just someone carrying out responsibility, if you will? I believe it's important for us to open our mouths and share that we appreciate, love, and thank God for all that he's already done. Amen. Oh, my God. I, I know somebody might say, well, the Lord knows that I'm glad about it. Uh, you might say so, and yes, he knows. But just like you, you like to hear somebody tell you thank you. I believe God want to hear thank you sometime, too. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. And so the word tells us, says, for us not to forget, not to let the thing slip away from us, what the Lord has already done, what we heard about, how that Jesus came through 40 and two generations that we yes. could be saved. Yes, yes. And the reality is, apart from God's grace, none of us deserve to be saved. Amen. Amen. I, I know some wasn't as bad as others. As one might feel, the reality is we were all equally as bad because it all equal loss. Amen. There's not a one in here that was almost saved. Mm. All right. <laughs> Hello, no, no, I, I, I need to go there because Amen. certain people haven't done what other people have done. And if you're not careful, you can feel like you weren't that bad anyway. Oh. So God didn't have to do much to save you. But the reality is, Jesus still had to come through 40 and two generations. He still had to be ridiculed of men. He still had to be spat on. He still had to be hung up on a cross and made a mockery of. He still had to be pierced in the side. His blood still had to drip down for your sin and mine. So whether you say, I wasn't that bad, or I say, I was bad as bad can be, the reality is we all needed Jesus equally as much. It is so. So then we all owe him our very best. Amen. So we have been talking a little bit uh, about the fact that we owe him. Let's 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 just go a little further today. Let's let's unpack this thing about gratitude a little bit more. Gratitude is a response. Amen. Gratitude is a reaction, if you will, or a response to something that preceded it. So if we're going to have an attitude of gratitude, then I at least need to think about something that has already happened in order to show gratitude. It is so. How can you really be grateful for what you have never seen or never had? It's only by something, you know, having had or received or experienced before that you can give gratitude. Now, I know somebody in here might want to go a little deep on me, but I can promise you I'll go deeper. So somebody said, well, um, you know, I heard them say, you're supposed to thank God even before you get it. So how is that, you know, applicable if something had to precede gratitude? Well, Let's see if we can go this way. All right. <laughs> Jeremiah was told that he had an assignment before he was in his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Come on, right. Here it was. He was told to preach the word. He said, hey, I can't do that. I'm too young. Mm -hmm. But 
the Lord said, don't say you too young. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had already known you. I had already ordained you. I had already given you assignment before you ever came out of the womb. So then he could tell God, thank you, before he ever started preaching, because he already had a call on his life before he ever showed up. Are you hearing today? So yes, you can go ahead and thank God for your blessing. Somebody already thanking God for the child that's not born. Somebody's thanking God for the house they're not in. Somebody's thanking God for the job they haven't met the employer yet. But you can do that because God has already given it to you. You just got to walk into it. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Gratitude. Are responsive to something that preceded it. Mm. So now, I believe and declare that many in here have said things like, you know, I would have, but I didn't think of it. Mm. Um, I would have, <laughs> but nobody said anything. And if someone had said something and maybe stirred your thought process, or if you remembered and the thought, you know, was resurrected, you would have handled some things in life differently. Who am I talking to? You, you just would. Amen. You just thought of it. Somebody said, well, I, I wish I knew then what I know now. If I, if I only knew it, I would have done this, that, or the other. All right? So now, so now. Many times, if we're not careful, we lose sight of the fact that we're missing opportunities to show God gratitude. All right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm just letting that one soak in just a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that we're missing yeah. opportunities mm -hmm. to show God gratitude. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking now about how you can how you can come in the house or you're at the restaurant and uh, uh, the food. I mean, you, you know, you you ready to do something about it, and and, and it comes, and sometimes it's looking good and smelling good, and and I know some folk they just go all in, they just they just go all in, <laughs> and don't even think about telling God thank you. Sometimes somebody at the table says, did anybody, get? oh wait, okay, okay. Amen. Sometimes I'll just bless the food that we're going to eat and bless the food you have already eaten. That's right. Amen. Because I know you went in. You, you didn't think about it. Glory to God. Amen. What? We, we just miss sometimes opportunities to give God thanks. You see, gratitude has to have an expression with it. It can't just be inside. It has to be shown. It has to come outside. For it to qualify as gratitude. Amen. Hello. Amen. And so, and, and so, uh, it might only be in the eyes. Somebody may not be able to take a hand and shake another hand to say, thank you. Or I appreciate what you've done. But the eyes starts sharing thought, if you will. Uh, it, it's what's called body language. Amen. Sometimes, yeah, let me, let me have one that works. Otherwise, I just use my outside voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, this word too good to play around with. It. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know the, the word of the Lord is good? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, and, and so, you know, you may not be able to get to a person or what have you to show the gratitude you want, but sometimes it's just a matter of making a phone call. You know, I really thank you and appreciate you, what you've done and, and how you've done. Just thinking about me, I'm, I'm appreciative for that. Amen. There's all kinds of ways and expressions of gratitude. So, so let's dial it in a little bit when it comes to us being conduits that God want to reach others through. Mm -hmm. 
the fact that he saved you and you and all of us here that are saved, the fact that he saved me, I ought to be a conduit that he works through to bring others to himself if I appreciate the fact that he saved me. Amen. Hello, somebody. This is not where we say, well, just us four and no more. All right. No, no, no. This is where it's like, God, I'm so thankful that you brought me into your family. I'm so glad that you saved me. I'm so glad that you gave me a hope. Well, I want you to work through me to bring somebody else to you. I want you to work through me that somebody else might know the peace that I now know, the joy that I now know, the trajectory my life is on, God. I want somebody else to know this. Use me for your glory. How many want to be used of God to reach somebody else for the cause of Christ? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you right now, your desire is in line with God's will for you. God wants to use every one of us, but we have to be willing to be that conduit that he draw others to himself through. Amen. Amen. And so, so a lot of folk who are in church are in church because they met somebody outside of church. And if I use church as the structural building, the facility where we come for corporate worship, if I use that as our definition for church, it's somebody that goes outside of the church and they show the love of the Father somewhere else. And then somebody says, well, hey, I want to I wanna go to your church. All right. Listen here, you and I are on assignment all the time. Amen. Hello, we may not be in the house, but we still represent the God of the house. Amen. Amen. It's like you may leave home, but you don't leave your family. You still part of that family, even if you don't like them. Huh? There's some folks they don't even want. Amen. Bobo, you know your cousin Bobo. Nobody gonna be bothered with Bobo. Amen. Amen. But but that's still your family. That doesn't separate you out. You still family. Amen. And we're the family of God and it doesn't matter what we are. We ought to honor and represent the God of the house, our, our Heavenly Father well. Amen? Amen. Also, when it comes to our gratitude, I believe we ought to endeavor to be timely when we go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some folk if they don't come late, they ain't coming. <laughs> Amen. And they, they just, that's just how they operate. Amen. But we can do something about that because God deserves nothing less than our best. Amen. 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 Come on in. Some of them jobs ain't going to tolerate it. All right. Come on. Now you may have one of those jobs where you get away with it and praise God if that's the kind of job you have. But there's some jobs, they're not playing that. You try being late if you want to, like you don't want to be there, they'll say, oh, you don't have to be here. That's right. Amen. You come late as you want to. You just stay on the other side of that door. <laughs> Amen. So when it comes to God, I believe we ought to give God nothing less than our best. Right. Amen. There are some habits we need to break. Now, that's a good place to say Amen. amen. There are some habits we need to break. Some of us, amen, we don't know when to leave the table. <laughs> yeah. All right, we believe now. it's not time to leave till all the food is gone. Oh. Hello? Man. Come on here. It is so. Some of us, amen, don't hardly know when to go to sleep. Yeah. Stay up and burn every hour we have. Until we can't hardly make it anywhere because we're nodding off. <laughs> Hello? No, there are some habits we actually need to break. Amen. So Come on in. So when it comes to a gratitude, our gratitude to God, amen, we need to break a habit where we're minimizing the opportunities to maximize on the gratitude we show to our Heavenly Father. Amen. amen. Another thing about gratitude, or another way we can demonstrate our appreciation to God for who he is and what he has done. How many believe God has given us everything we have? I mean, you really believe that. That's not just something you're saying. You really, 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 I'm looking around for hands. I, I want to see there's some, some believe you have something on your own. 
Amen. You believe God? Everything we have have come from God. Okay, all right, all right. Look at your neighbor and say, you said, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so what is it that I'm saying when I say, do you believe that everything we have comes from God? One of the things I'm saying, church, is even the air we're breathing, it's God's air. Yeah. We only have life because God has been so gracious. Yeah. Right at this very moment, while you and I are here together, there are people fighting to take a breath. Yeah. Amen. Right now, they're struggling. They're struggling. Somebody didn't make it the last hour because they did not get a breath. So the very life we have, it's all by God's grace. Everything you have, your house, your family, your health, your food, your, you name it, it's all because God has been so good. Amen. And, and I thought about uh, David, you know, David thinking about how good God had been to him. And I'm talking King David now. King David, thinking about how good God had been to him, he wanted to build a house for God. Amen. You might call it a church today, at that time a temple or a tabernacle. And uh, God said, David, no, nah, I, I, I'm not going to have you do that. I'm not going to have you do that. Uh, there's some stuff in your life. I, I'm not going to have you do it. But what I'll do is I'll let your son build me a temple. Right. Solomon. I'll let Solomon do it. And so what David did, David said, God, as it were, you may not let me build the temple, but I will help build it. All right. so, so David began to get into his treasuries. Let's go to 1 uh, Chronicles 29. 1 Chronicles 29. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at verse 12, 1 Chronicles 29, 12. And the scripture says, David is talking here, and he says, both riches and honor come from thee, mm -hmm. and thou reigneth over all. And in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Mm. Now therefore, O God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? The emphasis part of the verse. For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. All right. So here David has given, uh, according to today's estimates, if you will, hundreds of millions toward the building of the temple. All right, all right. And he said, Lord, who are we? In a place the question is asked about how can man even build a house for God to dwell in? God is everywhere. I mean, no physical building can contain him. You and I individually can't contain all of him. But because he is sovereign, because he is God, because he's every place at the same time, because he's omnipotent, he has all power in his hand, because he's omniscient, meaning he knows everything that could be known. Amen. He can be in your heart and life as well as being in mine, as well as being in the hearts of us across the water or across the nation. And so David said, what I give is yours already. See, sometimes we lose sight of the fact that what we have is not ours. Now, now, I, I, some of you, you may remember seeing little children play and they have toys and things around and uh, sometimes you have one little child playing you bring the other little child in the room and maybe they have a toy. And one of those children will look at the other one and want what the other one has. They're not satisfied to play with their own toy. So they'll try to get the toy from the other one and they'll call it mine. Mine. 
Amen. If you bring out some others, mine. And even if it's not there, they call it mine. Who, who know what I'm talking about in here? You ever, you ever seen that? Now, I'm, now, this may come out of surprise to you, but some of y'all was them babies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, the same thing happens when it comes to our tithe and our offerings. Hello, somebody. I said the same thing happened when it comes to our tithe and our offering. We said mine. God says, no, 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 no. I'm giving you all of it just to see if I can trust you to give me my part back. How many know we ought to be trustworthy? Amen. Amen. Everything you have that come from God, the Lord, he blessed us. He, he's the one who favored us and opened doors for us when we couldn't see our way. He's the one who made the way for us. He's the one who brought us out of all those situations. He's the one who's healed our body. He's the one who has favored us. Hello, it's not like you were so suave, so smooth, so devonary. You knew so much, you looked so good. Now you may look good, but you don't look that good. Come on here. No, 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 no. We can't afford to lose sight of this attitude of gratitude that we owe God everything. Amen. Hello, somebody. You see, one of the things that attitude does, let's, let's talk about that briefly. What, what does attitude do? Attitude draws to itself what attitude is directed toward. Case in point. You give somebody something. They show you gratitude. If they have another need or if you have more excess, you may just give more to them because they demonstrated gratitude. So gratitude draws to itself whatever it has come for. Whatever you, you give thanks for, you're subject to prepare yourself or you position yourself for more of the same. Are you hearing? Amen. So when we can demonstrate some gratitude to God, we position ourselves to receive some more of the same. Oh, God, help me in here today. It's amazing what we know as babies and lose sight of as we get older. Listen, now, now, now some of y'all have dealt with some children. They're about 8, 10 years old, you know, what have you, 7 years old, sometime younger, sometime a little older. Had you ever noticed sometime when they want something, they come and, and we have a, a phrase called buttering you up? They just get just as nice. I'm talking about even some of them bad kids. Amen. They get just as nice and, and, and you can't help but notice it. And you appreciate it. You know they got something nice to say. Uh, some of them look here and there go out in the yard and bring you some of them little dandelions. <laughs> Give you little flowers. Amen. You know, they two, three years old sometimes. Oh, it just melts your heart. And amen. They can't hardly ask for anything that you won't give them then. They want the popsicle, they want the little ice cream, the cake, the candy. Amen. You want to give it to them because, you know, they just showing you all that kindness. If natural man can appreciate that kind of attention and kindness and thoughtfulness, how much more God, when we say, God, I just want to give you my best. God, I just want to give you everything I got. God, I love you so much. God, you mean so much to me. Glory to God. Do you realize today, question is, that your heart and your wallet or your pocketbook, your money travel together? Amen. You put your money where your heart is. Amen. Whatever's important to you, that's where you put your money. If God means enough, then we're going to honor God because we're going to sow into the kingdom. <clears throat> Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes in the churches, we can do all right preaching till we start talking about money. Come on. But that's not the thing at Ark of Jesus because we're people with an attitude of gratitude. Amen. Amen. We're people that understand everything that I have came from the Lord. My God, I was in an accident. I almost didn't make it, but the Lord brought me out. I was in a situation, would be confined right now, but the Lord delivered me. I was in a situation, my family almost went to nothing, but God sustained my family. I owe him everything. Yes, 
Somebody said, I almost lost my mind. But look at what the Lord has done. Glory to God. There are some folk who might have written you off that you, you, you don't matter. Amen. You'll never be nothing. Some folk probably tried to block your way. But look at what the Lord has done. My God. Somebody was so deep in substance abuse until everybody thought they would die in substance abuse. But look at how our great our how great our God is that when everybody else gave up, God was still able to step in, turn our lives around. We're no longer bound by those things that once binded us and we can give God glory and praise. Our life is on a new trajectory. We got new joy. We got new hope. We got a new outlook. We got a whole nother life that's been put back together for us. A life that we messed up. Yes, I owe him everything. I owe him everything. Not sometime. Not just most of the time. All right, all right. I owe him everything. Yes. All the time. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, I desire. Yes. My will is to show him gratitude. Yes, yes, yes. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody in the church started out someplace else. Amen. Amen. None of us started out in the church. Amen. You said, no, but my mama brought me when I was a baby. Okay, but you wasn't born at the church. Hey, and you said, no, they had me in the back room. I couldn't get to the hospital. <laughs> well, I know you're trying to go deep on me. Let me go deeper. Bible says you're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Hello, somebody. You came here jacked up. All every one of us got here as damaged goods, irregular. Come on here. Amen. Already rejected. But thank God, he still had a plan for your life and mine. Thank God, he still has a plan for your life and mine. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter how far off center you may feel like you are right now. You still got opportunity, and God has an opportunity for you to still be all that he wants you to be. You still have an opportunity to climb up and climb all the glory to God. You don't have to be behind the wall that separates you from God's best. You don't to be in a lost place when he said, I came to find you. And thanks be to God, his arm is not shortened that he can't reach down and grab us and pick us up from a low place. You can't reach down and grab us and take us out of the muck and the fire of glory to God. Well, somebody asked a question, sir, who wouldn't serve a God like this? My God, you might have written me off, but God didn't write me off. My best days, I'm just coming into now. My best days, I'm taking steps toward. My best days right now. Yes, I messed up. I messed up long. I never should have done it. Can't blame it on nobody. It's all mine. But thanks be to God, He didn't give up on me. I'm coming on and I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. An attitude of gratitude. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I'm going to show him thanks. Yes. I'm going to give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Yes, is there anybody, anybody in here today that's saying, I'm going to do better at giving God praise. I'm going to do better at giving God thanks. On purpose, I'm going to be try to try to be more mindful of all that God has done for me. Glory to God, Amen. Even little things, you know, some things we consider little at certain points in life, but at other points they're big things. You know, like when you were younger, getting a Christmas gift was a big thing. Well, I know some of y'all's big thing now too, but at least you'll look for Santa Claus, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And when you're in school, the um, moving up ceremony from kindergarten to first grade right. is a big thing. Amen. And after you get a little further along, you forget about that. It doesn't seem that big anymore. You prepare for leaving elementary to go to middle school. Right. And that's a big thing. 
And then Somley Middle School, if there's a separated middle school, that's what I went to, when you leave middle school to go to high school, it's a big thing. And when you're looking at graduating from high school, that's a big thing. Yes, yes. Amen. And, and sometime in life, we forget all those big things and we count them little. But listen, if we never made it out of the moving up ceremony, hello, somebody. If we never made it out of elementary school or middle school, you never would have graduated from high school. There are so many who left one level of learning and never made it to another. I believe God is deserving of praise over all those levels, even now, glory to God. Yes, I'm a long way away from coming from high school to middle school, from elementary school to middle school, but thank God he helped me to get that far. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah, some of you may not have your GED, but you can still get it. Do you know? That many times it's, it's easier to get it than you think. See, see, we sometimes get stuck in the thought process that I'm older now. My memory is not as good. My brain don't work as fast. And so it's going to be harder. And I understand that psychology. But let me dispel the myth. You could have made it then if you were more interested. Uh -huh. If you were more hungry, you would have done it then. That's right. So the reality is, now that you're older, you're more mature, and you understand the value of the education, you're apt to go at it more, you'll retain more because you want it, and you'll excel quicker because you're hungry. It is so. Yeah, yeah. So for all of you who are thinking about going back to school, let's thank God he helped you when you were in school before. He didn't bring you that far to leave you. He can take you on, glory to God. Thank him that your mind works as well as it does. Some of you, you want to start your business. Think about all God has already done for you. If he brought you through all those other things, if he blessed you in all those other endeavors, he can bless you again. You want to write your book. I don't know, somebody in here might want to own their own airplane. Let me tell you something. You will commonly not rise level, uh, you will not rise higher than the level of your thinking. All right, that's it. That's it. Come on. If you see yourself as only coming to a certain level, it's a slim chance you're going to pass it. Even though our God is a God of more than enough, you're going to be somewhere in that zone oftentimes. But I'm telling you now, I want to encourage you. Since we serve such an awesome God, such a loving God, the Bible lets us know he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We ought to go ahead and thank him, glory to God, for everything that pertains to life and godliness. We ought to thank him for those other heights we're going to see in life, those other accomplishments we're going to see in life, the favor we're going to experience in life, the preferential treatment we're going to experience in life, the healing we're going to experience in life, the anointing we're going to experience in life. We ought to go ahead and thank him for it right now. Hallelujah. I trust that you can see yourself going from one level to another level. Glory to God. And the, the praise team are singing today. Say he deserves our praise. He deserves it. He deserves it. Glory to God. And I encourage you today, give God nothing less than your best. Amen. Give him your time. Make your way to the house of prayer. It is noteworthy that most folk work five days a week. Some only work two hours a day, but they do it five days a week. And they don't think it robbery to go to the job five days a week. For the two hours or the four hours or the eight hours or 12. Sometimes we do 12 hours a week. I mean, 12 hours a day, four days a week. Some are doing 60 hours a week and better. And we think nothing of it. And we say, hey, I want to get that money, glory to God. I, I, I'm trying to make some money. We'll even give overtime. And then when it comes to the service of the Lord, one time in the week, that's all I can do. Y'all got two services? I ain't coming. Uh -oh. <laughs> one is my limit. But you go to the job every day. It's only God that gave you the job. It's only God that gave you the health and strength to make it to the job. It's only God that kept you safe on the job. It's only God. Yeah. How do we back up on God and we give the man five days a week, 40 hours a day, and miss two two-hour services in a week? Amen. There's a saying among men, 
Christ said, don't bite the hand that feeds you. I think we need to make some readjustments. Hello, somebody. Somebody say, it's time. Come on, all together. It's time to readjust my thinking. Come on here. Tell, tell us about it. Say, I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad. Woo, Jesus, I'm glad I'm alive. I can hear this word today. My God, we want to go around with an attitude of gratitude. I, I know some of you may not get along too good with your mother, your father, your sister, your brothers, what have you, your in-laws. Hey, Amen. Let's just try to show some love. Let's thank God for the folk that he has had in our lives, even those folk that rubbed us the wrong way. Do you know it's some of those folk that rubbed you the wrong way to help make you who you are today and help yeah. make me who I am? Yeah, yeah. I'm thankful to God for everybody that was in my life. Some of them may have made me cry. Some of them may have made me mad. All right, all right. <laughs> hey, glory. But thank God, help, hallelujah, because they still help to make me. Everybody in your life helps to season your life for who you are and who ultimately you will be. Yeah, exactly. It may just be a brief moment of time in your life, but they're in your life on purpose. The Bible said all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to your purpose. Amen. According to his purpose, my God, you need to understand today that I'm blessed no matter what's going on in my life. So I'm giving God thanks. I got a supervisor, got a stink attitude, but God, I'm giving you thanks. I could be unemployed with no supervisor. Amen. You don't have a supervisor and you don't have an attitude at all. Good, bad, or indifferent. Come on in. So we want to grow in this thing of gratitude. Can we just tell God thank you right now? Come on, just tell him thank you, Lord. Thank you, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 thank you. My God, we bless the Lord today. I thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, if you haven't been purposefully, diligently, consistently just telling God thank you, then that's something that you got to make yourself do. You see, because until you develop it as a way of life, it, it becomes work. You got to actually, oh yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. Or you, you know, you sit down, you get it in, and you think, oh, thank you, Lord. And you go back into it. Uh, but once you have gotten into that thing of telling him thank you, then you usually tell him thank you before you start this part. For that elbow and that jaw. The elbow before it bend and before that jaw drop. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You might be right there at the bar, right there at the point. Ah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Go ahead and get it in. Amen. Get it in. So we want to get in that place and it's a process. Tell somebody, look at your neighbor, say it's a process. It's a process. Amen. I'm thankful to God that he is patient with us. Amen. To help us get there. And so uh, yes. those persons in your life that you are mindful of, that it comes to your mind because sometimes we just don't think of certain things. But when you do think of it, even if you can't get to them, just tell God, thank you. Thank you. Amen. I thank God for my wife. Amen. 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 Lady Singleton. For my children. Glory to God. For my family, church family, biological family, Amen. and even the family of creation. Amen. Amen. I just thank God for all of you. At this time, we're getting ready to pray. I said we're going to get out earlier today. I honor my word. Amen. 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 But before, but before, before we move further, I want to pray. Now, our greatest expression of thankfulness to God for who he is, for what he has done, is us giving ourselves to him. That's our greatest expression. Now, I can tell him thank you when I'm eating my food, but if I don't accept Jesus as I, my Savior, if I don't receive the Lord to my life, I'm still coming up real short. Amen. Someone said, first things first, and you don't put the cart before the horse. Amen. It's a, a metaphor of talking about you don't do things backwards. 
all right? And so the first thing is that I, I believe the Lord Jesus wants to come into every one of our lives. I, I believe he wants to be our Savior and he wants to be our Lord. And so right now today, if you're not saved, you can be. It's not a long, drawn-out, complicated process. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So whether you're in the sanctuary with us today or you're in our streaming audience, the Lord wants you to have a personal relationship with him because he wants to have a personal relationship with you. And so this can be accomplished by just accepting into your life. Now, I'm not going to ask your name, not going to call anybody up, but I want to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you today, you say, I'm not saved, but I want to be saved. Would you include me in the prayer? I'm not born again, but I want to be born again. Would you pray for me? If that's you today, right now you can signify for the elevation of your hand. If you're with us in our streaming audience, you can just say, that's me. Amen. You just type in, that's me, and we'll know that it's you. Glory to God. You say, I'm not saved, but I want to be saved. Bishop, would you include me in the prayer? I want to accept Jesus Christ into my life today. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My second appeal today is for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You see, not only are we to be saved, the Bible tells us to be filled with the Spirit, the Spirit of God. This is what helps us to live the life out in a most God-honoring way. It is Him. He helps us to live it out. You say, that's me, all right, I'm saved. I accepted the Lord. I'm really struggling. Yes, sir, I see your hand here. I'm really struggling. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Glory to God. Yes, ma'am. I see your hand here. Are there others today? You say, I need that help. I'm, I'm trying to get it right. God knows I am. Would you include me in the prayer? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. My last appeal now. You can accept Christ as your personal Savior. You can even be filled with the Spirit of God here today. Amen. And if you are a member of another ministry, you could go there and serve faithfully. This appeal that I'm making now, this is for membership in Ark of Jesus Ministries. Listen, I want to be your pastor. I believe that God will use me instrumentally, strategically, and pivotally in your life to help you walk out your God-given purpose. I believe that God will use this ministry to help you grow in your faith. If that's you today, you don't have a church home. You want to belong to a church. I believe Ark of Jesus is ideal, the ideal place. If that's you today, you say, yes, I need a church home. Would you include me in the prayer? You can signify by the elevation of your hand. I want to be included in the prayer. I want to be a member of this church. Glory to God. God bless you. In our streaming audience, you can just say, that's me. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we honor and thank you now that you would love us enough as to send us your word today and then illuminate the truths of your word at the level of our comprehension. Thank you, God, that your word has gone forth and our hearts represent good ground whereof the good seed of your word is now sown and even germinates and produces fruit that are bound to your glory. Good fruit, abundant fruit, and remaining fruit in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that there is a residual blessing deposited in our lives that will stay with us well beyond 20 years, God, that will help us in our walk in honoring you and demonstrating an attitude of gratitude. And now, those who lifted your hands on any and or all of the appeals, I ask you to repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you now, to forgive me of all my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior and my Lord from this day forward. This I ask in Jesus' name. And I thank you for Amen. Come on and put your hands together and give the Lord a clap offering. 
in the house today. My God, my God. Amen. Those of you in our streaming audience today, listen, if you're anywhere in the area of 1000 North Winton Road, we're asking you to make your way here. Also, you can send us your prayer request. Amen. We would be honored to carry your request before God in prayer. We know that God not only instructed us to pray, nor does he simply want us to pray, but he also answers prayer. My God. And so we encourage you. Thank you for tuning in with us. Much love. Much love. Much love. Amen. Amen. Come on, put our hands together.